The chair recognizes Representative Dillon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to rise in support of House Bill 4115. It's been a long time coming. Um, uh, I, I, I am very happy to be able to stand here and lend my support to a, a school aid budget primarily that I think is a, um, while not a perfect budget, a good budget and really a testament to what we can accomplish when both sides, both chambers come together and listen to the best ideas that everybody has, no matter where they come from, no matter what party they have. Um, even though the budget um, is only about a 1.5% gross increase over last year, um, there's a couple policy changes in this budget that I think are going to have long-standing positive implications for not just uh, our school districts, but more importantly, the kids that occupy the seats in those classrooms. Number one is the $70 million for at-risk uh, students. This is a fund, as many who were here last um, uh, session will know, that many of us uh, fought to include a $40 million increase in certain budgets last year, which would have been a 10% increase over the current amount. This at-risk line item, 31A, has not been increased in over a decade. And I think this is uh, an acknowledgement and a recognition by the governor and also leaders in the House and the Senate that we, ought, we have to be strategic with our uh, school aid dollars and understanding that poverty is one of the most, if not the most, important determinant of a child's success in a public school in Michigan. These dollars are going to be targeted to those districts with the most needs. The district I represent, this is actually uh, makes up the lion's share of the overall per pupil funding increase. And I think that is critically important as we go forward and debate school aid policy that we, we understand that with our limited resources, I'd always like to see a lot more, but I understand that we do have limited resources at time and to make sure that we direct those to those students who need the help the most is a prime reason I'm supporting this budget. Also, the decision to roll up best practices and performance grants I think is a wise policy decision. We need to trust our local school districts and I think this experiment that we did for the last four years, while well-intentioned, I think we've under, we understand now that our school districts are best able to determine how they spend their money. And even though, in some instances, the per pupil allotment um, is essentially eaten up by the reduction in those grants, going forward, this is a better way to spend our dollars. Uh, not to mention the commitment to third grade reading um, and the, the idea that every district in this state, no matter uh, whether they're a high-funded district or low-funded district, is going to get a net increase this year which I don't think we could say in every other budget, is a very positive sign. So I want to commend um, Chairman Kelly, um, uh, Representative Roberts, who I think did an excellent job communicating the priorities of many of us in the Democratic Caucus, our colleagues in the Senate, the Speaker, the Chairman of the House Appropriations Committee. This is a good budget. It's not perfect, but it's good. And in an, area, in an era where it's almost impossible to achieve the perfect, I'm happy to stand here and support something that is much better than what we've seen uh, before. And I'm uh, looking forward to casting my first yes vote on any budget since I've been here. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Dillon.